Hello everyone! Uh, a lot of you have seen this game already because it's, well, probably the most famous game ever played. Uh, but the chess community is growing and uh, a lot of new players are starting to play chess every day. And, uh, well, it would be a shame not to show this game on, on my channel. Uh, this was played in 1858 and it, it was played while Paul Morphy was visiting Paris. Uh, he was 21 years old at the time. And he got an invitation from the Duke of Brunswick uh, to come see, come see the opera with him. Uh, it, was a, it was an Italian opera called Norma, and since Morphy was uh, really into music, he accepted the offer, but uh, by accepting the offer to the opera, he also accepted his challenge uh, to play against him and uh, his companion, uh, Count Izzard. And okay, uh, Morphy got to the opera and uh, they started to play, but for the entire game, uh, when Morphy was seated at the board, they had their own private box, uh, which was above the stage, uh, Morphy was actually facing uh, uh, to the stage with his back and uh, for the entire game Morphy was actually trying to watch the show so he had to look back uh, to, to see what was going on in the play. And uh, so one, one might say that Morphy actually played this game blindfolded, uh, as well he could have probably. Uh, so Paul Morphy is white and uh, Duke and uh, Count are black. Uh, we have e4 by Morphy and e5. Uh, knight to f3, d6, the Philidor defense, uh, Morphy plays d4, uh, occupying the center, and uh, now bishop to g4. And this bishop to g4 move, uh, it was considered standard theory at the time, but uh, today it's considered to be a bad move, as uh, if uh, if white simply plays d captures on e5 and uh, black responds with e captures on d5, uh, d captures on e5, uh, then simply queen captures on d8 with check, king captures on d8, and now simply knight captures on e5. And this wins a pawn, also threatening uh, here to attack the bishop and also threatening the, the pawn on f7. So after Morphy played uh, d captures on e5, uh, the two the two opponents uh, decided to play bishop captures on f3. So Morphy played queen captures on f3 and now black is still down a pawn and he plays d captures on e5. And Morphy plays bishop to c4, developing nicely also with a threat of checkmate on f7. So black has to defend this. Uh, they play uh, knight to f6, defending, and now Morphy plays queen to b3. Now attacking again f7 and also b7. And uh, well, uh, both threats cannot be defended, uh, so uh, black plays uh, queen to e7, now defending this f7 threat. And uh, Steinitz here and also Lasker after him and a lot of other players have said that uh, Morphy should have played a queen captures on b7 here and that this is the strongest move. Uh, but that's just the thing, uh, queen captures on b7 is a butcher's move and uh, Morphy was an artist, not a butcher. So Morphy plays knight to c3, again, going for rapid development instead of material. Uh, we have c6, now the queen is protecting this b7 pawn. And we have bishop g5 by Morphy, also going for rapid development. Uh, and now uh, b5, attacking this bishop and forcing him to move from this strong diagonal and the threat of f7. Uh, but here Morphy doesn't retreat with the bishop, instead he plays knight captures on b5, uh, offering a knight. Uh, so c captures on b5 and now bishop captures on b5 with check. And uh, well, uh, there's really not a lot of ways uh, black can defend against this check. This knight is pinned uh, from the bishop so he can't really go anywhere. Uh, if the king goes to d8 then simply a queen set castle with check and this is completely winning. So black tries uh, knight, knight, uh, knight b to d7. And uh, Morphy just uh, plays a queenside castle, and now this knight is attacked with the bishop and the rook, and also this knight is kind of protecting it, but it's really not because it's pinned. Uh, so we have rook to d8, now defending that knight, and uh, Morphy just plays rook captures on d7. Rook captures on d7, and now plays the other rook to d1. And now this uh, rook is attacked also twice, and uh, well, white is completely winning in this position. Uh, but uh, black tries tries a freeing move. Uh, th they decide to play queen to e6, and also now uh, now threatening to exchange queens. And also now this knight isn't pinned anymore. So if the rook is captured, the knight can simply recapture it. Uh, but this actually allows Morphy to finish finish the game in, in great style. Uh, Morphy plays bishop captures on d7 with check, and now of course the knight can capture because it's not pinned anymore. We have a knight captures on d7, and now a beautiful finishing move by Morphy. Queen, queen to b8 check and uh, black black is without a move uh, the king can't go anywhere only move black has is to accept the queen sacrifice with knight captures on b8 and uh, morphy finishes the game with rook to d8 checkmate and you can see this beautiful mating picture it's probably the most famous mating picture 
in the entire chess history where black uh, white only has a, a bishop and g5 and a rook on d8 but that's uh, that's all it takes so yeah, uh, it's it's a beautiful game and it's it's a great example of uh, how uh, how rapid development is preferred to being materialistic and uh, it's it's also a very nice story how Morphy played this entire game while actually trying to play it, trying to watch the opera that he hadn't seen before and he's uh, he's also playing against two players uh, who were <laughs> who are actually speaking in three different languages just to confuse Morphy so he wouldn't understand them uh, but it didn't do them uh, much much good. So yeah, uh, I do hope you enjoyed this game, and uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon.